Hi, this is Lexi and Sid of Hess Van Schlemmer Metalworks and Art, home of the Schlemmer Metal Wolves. We are a small but furious family-run welding, fabrication, and metalwork shop with CNC capabilities and now full-scale powder coating operation. We bring unique, affordable quality art to life within the realm of practicality. Whether it's signs, sculptures, railings, shelves, furniture, or even just powder coat for your rims or your patio set, Give us a look, check us out on Facebook or Instagram, or call 618-670-5724. We are Hess Van Schlemmer Metalworks. That was terrible. Allie tried. Hey everybody, Shane Presley here. Let me tell you about my friends at Naked Vine. Located at 1624 Clarkson Road in Chesterfield, Missouri. Uh, hey, swing by and visit them Tuesday through Saturday for a nice glass of wine, whiskey, or local craft beer. And they have great live music happening this week on Tuesday, September 11th. Uh, I'll be out there hosting my monthly show, my singer-songwriter storytelling showcase. That's a 7 o'clock start, $5 at the door. And this month I'm bringing along my good friends Emily Wallace, Kevin Babb, and Joshua Aker. So do not miss that show. It's a real uh, good time out there. And on uh, Thursday, September 13th, Phil and Carson... Of the Scandaleros. Sa Friday, September 14th, John Bonham and Friends. And on Saturday, September 15th, Cherokee Moon. So uh, find all this information and more at NakedVine.net. Follow them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Get involved with everything happening at Naked Vine. So thanks, everybody. Enjoy the show. Um, the podcast is kind of like a, it's like a radio show that's not on the radio. It's on, it's on the internet. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> That's also like my mom. Uh, it makes it sound more confusing, doesn't it? Uh, it sounds like this. Hey, everybody. This is Brad Williams, and I know I don't sound like a midget, but I am, and you are listening to the Rock Paper Podcast. What the Rock Paper Podcast? Oh, wow. Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. Rock, 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 Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast, coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri. Hanging out today at uh, Helium Comedy Club with Fred Williams. Hey man, we're back in the green room before the show. Yeah, uh, very exciting. See, this is the thing, is you just came up to me after the show and said, like, hey, I'm a fan of you and I have this podcast and it's, it's a good podcast and I won an award or something, and uh, would you like to do it? And I said, absolutely, let's do it, because A, I'm on the road, what else <laughs> do I have to do? And uh, I, 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 I like rewarding people because... Um, the, the, my philosophy is if you don't ask, you don't get, right. you know, I'm not going to do your podcast, uh, just on a whim. Uh, you have to ask me to do the podcast. Right. So you did, here I am. Uh, and here we go. Yeah, man. I thank you very much for, uh, for, uh, giving me the opportunity, man. This was cool. Cause like, yeah, well, like I said, Thursday night, I stopped by and had a great time laughing, uh, with you and, uh. Uh, you and Carmen and uh, yeah, Carmen Morales, who is my opener this week. She's fantastic, yeah. uh, and it, it, it's it's weird because like not all the time do I get to choose the openers. This is a, this is a rare weekend where I get to choose the openers, and uh, Carmen's been a friend for a while, and uh, she's killing it. it it's it, it's it, it's weird because sometimes I come to hang out at uh, with, uh, at a club on the road, and I didn't get to choose my opener, so. Uh, sometimes the opener isn't good. Sometimes they're great. Sometimes they're great, but they're not a good person. I don't like hanging out with them. Right. Uh, it, it, it just, it, it, it depends. It's a crapshoot. But when I get to bring a friend on the road like Carmen, then that, uh, that makes the whole weekend better. For sure. You two, uh, I, I noticed, uh, some of the pictures up online, uh, on Instagram and stuff. You, you two, uh, having some fun around yep. the, around town today? Yeah, we went to City Museum and, uh... Yeah, City Museum, and uh, that's like, uh, all I can describe it for those of you who aren't in St. Louis, it's like an adult playground. It's just a giant, like, you hear museum, you're like, oh, there's going to be paintings, or there's going to be, you know, artifacts, ar the, uh, archaeological things. It's not that at all. It is just a giant McDonald's play place. Right. Yeah, I uh, actually, uh, even though I live here, I haven't been there uh, in several years, and I know it's like expanded way more than uh, yeah. when I was last there. So, like, because it was like, 
yeah uh, a long time ago so anyway but uh i'm glad to see you all had a yeah uh, a good time over there yeah it was a lot it was a lot of fun i don't know how well you'd be you you do there yeah because there's a lot of really small <laughs> areas to get into and you are not a small person <laughs> like i like I like I was running through it and doing all right. Carmen was struggling a little bit, so I can only imagine that uh, you would also be struggling. Yeah, not built for a guy like you. Yeah, uh, that's uh, that uh, seems to be the case with a lot of those things. Uh, yeah, all the theme parks and different things. So yeah, you know, uh, I mean, I sort of famously talk about how. It's tough to ride roller coasters and mm-hmm. you know stuff like that, but you don't think about the opposite end of the spectrum, where yeah. if you're huge, uh, it's also tough to ride roller coasters sure. and harder to fly and things like that. So uh, yeah, there's there the, the world is made for a specific size human being, right? And you and I are not that human <laughs> being, my friend. Yeah. We are. We are the opposite ends of the spectrum. It's weird to stand next to you and just think, yeah, we're the same species. <laughs> It's kind of like if a chihuahua stood next to a pit bull, you know. It, it's it's that kind of thing where it's just like, wow, this is the, this is the same, this is the same human, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you uh, do you uh, get to sample some of our uh, local cuisine around? Yeah, I got to go out and do, do some barbecue. Um, I wish I could remember what the place was called. Uh, it's salt and sweet, yeah. salt sweet. and smoke, salt and smoke. Yeah, that one. Uh, but yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. It was it was really great, and I I love when a region or an area just says this is what we do. Right, we are really fucking good at it, and uh, that's what they that's what they did. I mean, because I I live in Los Angeles where it is tough to find some really good barbecue. Mm. It's just they don't have the patience. They don't have the technique. Right. Uh, barbecue is slow. And everything in L.A. is fast and instant now. And uh, so it's nice to come to a place where they go, no, we're going to take our time and make sure this thing gets really fucking good. Yeah. And, and and they do. Um, and there, there there's, there's a lot of great places here. And uh, I don't want to act like, what is it, salt and smoke? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't want to act like that's the only great place here. I've got a lot of good uh, people online when they're like, you should have gone here, you should have yeah. gone here. It's like, yeah, I, I'm here for like a day. Sure. Uh, so I did, I did as much as I could do. It is funny how like everybody has their favorite zone. That's like that's the one they want you to go to. And it's like whether it's yeah. pizza, barbecue, whatever. They everybody's got very opinionated on those things. And yeah, they want. Uh, sorry, I'm I'm my voice is getting quieter because I'm walking around the room trying <laughs> to set up tea and uh my dinner uh but yeah they everyone wants you to love their thing yeah right w- whatever their thing is they want you to also like their thing and uh it's not that i don't like your thing it's just that maybe i found something else that i do <laughs> like exactly and, yeah. and it's great yep uh well we uh man i was uh really enjoyed the the set this weekend and uh, i was uh thank you cracking up uh especially um the you did the uh, the act out for uh, your your uh, hand jobs for heroes uh, <laughs> and like I was uh, that made me cry man I was cracking up doing that stuff so thank you but sir. Uh, yeah really uh, really great weekend uh, and like Carmen's uh, was uh, super hilarious too and so yeah it, it's I'm in an interesting point right now where I've just recorded uh, a Netflix half hour special so all that material is now. Right. It's gone, so now I'm just trying to throw shit at the door yeah. and, or at the wall and just see what sticks. And uh, so I'm trying. I'm trying a lot of stuff, and uh, so far so good. So far it's working. But um, that's one thing about comedy that never gets old and never gets boring is writing new material and sure. how awesome it feels when something lands, when something actually hits. You're because. There, there, there are sometimes when I, I'm, I, I've been telling my jokes for a while, and I've, I've been telling a particular joke for a while, and I pause and go, how the hell did I write this? Like, it's really, like, it's complex. There's little, uh, there's little word choices and pauses and uh, voice inflections. Like, how did I, how did I write this? And then I get to see, I, I get to experience that process again as I'm writing a new half hour and writing new material where I go, oh. It, it, it's just a it's just a slow build. It's kind of, it's kind of like barbecue where it's it's <laughs> slow. You can't instantly 
write a joke or write a special or write an hour of comedy. It takes time, at least for me it does. Uh, and it, it's fun to see how how something has evolved. Yeah. Like, uh, there's a bit I'm doing to close right now that uh, is about dogs that I wrote before I got a dog. Mm-hmm. And then I got a dog, and then I had to... It had it took on a whole new level because now I have to talk about my dog in that, and then it makes the joke better. Now it's not someone else's dog; it's my dog. Sure. It's more it's more personal story. So um, it, it, it's really fun to sort of connect the dots and connect the puzzle pieces and see uh, see how to make these things really good. Yeah, I, as a fan of uh, comedy, and I've you know seen my friends do a lot of the same jokes over and over, but it is funny to watch that that evolution of a joke. You know, watch them like figure out like. You know those, like you're saying, those pauses and those uh, voice inflections and those yeah. different things that make it take it to the next level and make it. Uh, complete. Yeah, yeah, it, it's the thing that um, uh, Louis C.K. ruined comedy in a few ways. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't say ruined comedy, but um, when he started doing the, the hour, the new hour every right. year, I was like, dude. Wait one more year. Yeah. Just wait. Wait one more year with those jokes, and have and let them become better. Because you do. You discover things. You you figure things out. You uh, discover new ways, new points of view, new punchlines, new tags. So just like just wait. Just just wait. <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, it, it it's fun to. To now just be writing the new material and figuring out what works and yeah. seeing the audience responding. And the one thing I take a lot of pride in is I get a lot of people that come to my shows that have been to my shows before. They come back and go, this is my third time seeing you, fourth time seeing you. And I also I always want people to have a brand new, not maybe not a brand new experience, but um, a new experience. I, I don't want to have the same jokes. I, I don't want someone to see me, then watch my special see the same material they saw when they saw me, yeah. and then when I come back to their town, they see me again, it's the, it's the same material again. I, that's like my worst nightmare. Right. It, it's my worst fear. So I'm, I'm just constantly trying to throw shit at the wall and just, and just sure. uh, yeah, see what happens. Yeah, I brought two friends out, and that was their... Uh, they had no idea. They, uh, they didn't know anything about your, your comedy. I, I suggested uh, we should go to the show, and they were like, all right, and, like, and they had a great time, but uh, it, was, it was really funny to... You know, for them, like not not having any frame of reference of what your material was like, and yeah, uh, but they all they didn't really enjoyed it and had a great time. Good. It, it's funny. Um, when people that know me really well, like especially like my wife, when she when when she comes to the shows, she doesn't watch me. She watches the audience right. watch me. Yeah. Uh, it's like if you've ever been, done that thing where you you show your friend or your girlfriend or your boyfriend your favorite movie. You're like you've seen the movie a million times. It's your favorite movie, so you're watching your friend and seeing if they like it as much as as much as you do. So um, my wife will oftentimes just watch the audience and see if they laugh and see how they're reacting and see uh, if they're groaning, if they're talking. Like she's she gets a kick out of just watching the audience, and I do too. I'm constantly watching the audience, just figuring out. But I'm but I'm doing it from the perspective of. I'm watching the audience to see where I'm going to take the set, uh, what I can do, how I can change it, how I, is it a dirty crowd, are they paying attention, are they too drunk, is one person talking in the corner, what's the wait staff doing, is, are, the, are the checks dropping, all that is going through my head and more uh, when, when I'm on stage. Yeah. How much is, uh, you, you mentioned your wife here, and, uh, and yep. like you said, you guys are married about a, a year or so now? A little more than a year. Is, uh, is, is, uh, has there been more material, you think, uh, coming out of... Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, I write what I know. Right. I write about my life. I write about my experiences, and that's how I have an experience. It, it is it, it, if you go through my specials and my albums, every special or album has one particular bit right. that is just where my life is at that point. Whether it be uh, my first special, which was sort of my introduction uh, to ev- to everyone, or whether it be my second special. Which uh, which was all about my dad and uh, and when and when he got diagnosed with cancer, or then my Netflix special coming out, which is a lot about uh, being engaged mm-hmm. and uh, at the time and and getting married and that whole thing. Um, and now my 
material right now is about home life, right. being settled into the relationship, having the dog, having the in-laws, having the relatives, and the reactions to all that. So it, it's it's just, I imagine at some point I'll have a child, and then at, when, when, when I have a kid, that's what, that's what the material's going to be about, because that's where my mind's going to be at. Right. It, it, it's just a matter of uh, where my mind is, what's going on in my life, and that's going to be the, the thing that I write about. Yeah. Do you have a, is there a date on that uh, Netflix as ours? Uh... They are so fucking secretive. <laughs> yeah. um, they've told me fall. Okay. I That's all I know. Yeah. I, I wish I could tell you a sure. date, uh, but they have told me the fall, so I will wait. Soon, yeah. And uh, whenever, it's just going to happen one day. I'm sure I'm, <laughs> sure I'm going to be on Netflix going, oh shit, yeah. it's out. Well, there's a, there's like, they give you like those uh, push alerts if you have yeah. the app on your phone or whatever. Yeah. And like, uh, all of a sudden, I'll get a message that, hey, that's coming out. I'm like, oh, cool. I had no idea. So like, Yeah. So hopefully that happens. Um, I'm excited, though. My Netflix special is not just mine. I'm a part of a group. I'm a okay. part of a group called The Degenerates, which is uh, Christina P., Big J. Okerson, um, Joey Diaz, Yamanika Sanders, Liza Trainer, uh, who are great comics. So hopefully I get their fans coming and watching, and then uh, they'll, they'll, they'll discover me. Yeah, very cool. Uh, well, you can get involved with uh, all things Brad Williams. Like you said, you mentioned the specials and the CDs, and those are all uh, bradwilliamscomedy.com. And uh, you can get follow Brad along with uh, on uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and all that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, bradwilliamscomedy.com. Instagram is bradwilliamscomic. Wait, is it? No. What, am, what is my Instagram? <laughs> I don't know my Instagram. I should really look well, this up. I think Adam usually takes care of it for you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Twitter, uh, Twitter is at Funny Brad. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, Brad. Yeah, Brad Williams comic. I I try to post on all the social medias. I try to do a nice balance of content and promotion. You'll hear stuff about my podcast, the About Last Night podcast. Yeah. Uh, you'll hear stuff about my road dates in terms of what I'm doing, and uh, all and also. You'll, you know, uh, I'll try to write jokes and I'll try to do funny things. I know going to the city museum today, I posted yeah. a video of me falling in slow motion <laughs> into a giant ball pit. Because, yeah. uh, I don't know, dwarf falling into a ball pit seems kind of magical to me. <laughs> uh, so that worked out. But, yeah, it, 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 it's just whatever. And I, 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 try to, I try to entertain the people that follow me as well. as it, It's weird because it's this whole new skill now that a comic has to have. It used to be, there There was a time during the Tonight Show where all a comic had to do was have seven funny minutes yeah. because that's all they needed for the Tonight Show. Now you have to have your hour, you have to have your podcast, you have to be funny on Instagram, you have to be funny on Twitter, you have to be, uh, you have to possibly have a YouTube channel, do some sketches, you have to be able to write a roast uh, when, when, when you do a roast battle or something. It, it's it's crazy how many skills now you have to have. and it's It's not just being funny sure uh, there's a lot of funny people out there there's some really funny comedians that aren't that popular because they don't have the business acumen or they don't uh, they, you know they don't know how to promote themselves so um, it, 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 it's a really interesting business because it's changing a lot right now where we're just finding new ways like now you could be like alright watch me play video games on Twitch <laughs> uh, if someone wants to watch me get Owned by a bunch of twelve-year-olds playing Star Wars Battlefront Two. Yeah, you can watch that. Uh, I, I don't know why you'd want to watch that, but okay, uh, cool. So it, it 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 it's never evolving business. It's never, it's it it's never the same thing. And uh, but it's a fun business. I was talking with Carmen about it today. How just like we were out at a a, a kids museum, you know, or a, a, essentially a fun land, and we're like we're technically being paid right now. Like right. this is our job. With this, we are on the clock. Right now, just exploring a city, eating barbecue, and sliding down a 10-story slide. Yeah, man. <laughs> Sounds like a pretty good life to me. It is. Uh, well, you mentioned other podcasts, and I, that's a lot of how this all started for me. Like, I uh, uh, I told you a little bit at, uh, Thursday, but, like, at, uh, uh, I met uh, Jay Larson several years ago at Funny Bone. Jay and, Larson. Yeah. And he uh, he's like, hey, check out my podcast. So I started listening to Crab Feast, and the Crab Feast introduced me to about last night. And, nice. And uh, so uh, thanks to uh, Jay and Ryan for for introducing me to Adam and Brad. But uh, I love what you guys do, and uh, that that you guys are a big part of my life, man. I've been listening to that sh- your show for uh, about like, at least five years or something. Now. Wow. Yeah, we have over four hundred episodes, and it's crazy when you look back and you go, "Holy shit, we've really done over four hundred episodes." Yeah. How do we still have shit to say? <laughs> um, yeah. 
And uh, that's, wow, that's very humbling that you say that. I'm glad that uh, we were able to have some sort of inspiration in your life. That's crazy because we all do this. Um, comics put out a podcast. They put out a tweet. They put out a special. And we're, that's our job is to put out content. Right. But then we we forget that it, it really does touch people sometimes and it really does affect people sometimes. Um, there it, it, At at the city museum today there was about a, maybe a 15 16 year old kid who has autism who recognized me and came up to me and was really excited and his parents were there and they were talking about how like yeah he can recite your specials mm-hmm. and it sort of calms him down and it keeps him focused when your specials are on I'm like wow yeah, that's, that's madness crazy. that's that's insane and the kid was so excited, like he he was having like an out about body experience yeah. meeting me, sure. and um, that's a trip because I've been the same guy my whole life. It's not like you get into show business and they ha- and they hand you a briefcase and go, "All right, here's the briefcase," and inside the briefcase there's your contract, and uh, you're now officially famous, and uh, you're now officially a different person. Here's your money. Here's your hookers. Here's your blow. <laughs> Uh, they don't do that. It it, it, uh, it all comes slowly. Uh, so, it, like, one day you're just doing the same thing that you're always doing, and then the next day someone's starting to recognize you. The next day someone's sending you uh, really crazy messages on social media. There's people that just want to hang out with you. There's people that uh, that there's people that suddenly start hating on you for no goddamn reason whatsoever. Uh, all that just kind of happens slowly, and it's really interesting as, as it goes down. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, the, well, I guess uh, at the time of recording this, the latest episode of the podcast with... Uh, with uh, Wee Man, that was yeah. uh, very funny. Uh, yeah, the About Last Night podcast. Our yeah. we had an episode with the uh, Wee Man. So that's two dwarves, one podcast. <laughs> pretty magical. Yeah. I, 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 you know, it, I, I'm pretty sure if you hear two dwarves on on, on a podcast, you get the winning lot, uh, lot of numbers. <laughs> so you should just go listen, so you can have the winning lot of there numbers. There it is. Yep, that's the answer. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, checked all that out uh, again. Uh, grab up uh, Brad's uh, DVDs and CDs and. Uh, Yes. See when he's coming to a town. Buy yeah. everything. Yeah, do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'll get out of here. I'll let you enjoy your dinner. Thank and you. uh And uh, I really appreciate you taking a couple minutes out to hang out. Yeah, no worries. Here. Thank. So. Thanks for doing it. Uh, thanks for having me on. Thanks for being a fan. And um, yeah, uh, you should. You and I should just walk out together and say <laughs> we used to be twins, but then <laughs> I ate gluten. <laughs> That'll be fun. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, buddy. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Well, yeah, that was it.